That's why BKFC and Bare Knuckles so exciting. And so many fans are growing to it. There is no break. There's no wrestling. There's nothing on the ground. It's it's Conor McGregor said like this is from start to finish an exciting sport. It's full of it. Emilio the Honey Butcher, Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. This episode of the Honey Badger Hour podcast is brought to you by the original Clippers Barbershop. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Honey Badger Hour. It's your boy, the Badger, and we're back. Today, we're joined with a very special guest. We got a bare knuckle brawler in the house. Coming all the way from Fort Pierce. Did I yes, say that sir. right? Yes, sir. Coming all the way down from Fort Pierce. We're blessed just before his BKFC fight coming up on June 23rd. We got the big dog in the house. My man, Steven Tomahawk Townsend. Man, I appreciate you having me, brother. Welcome to the podcast, my man. Appreciate you, G. Oh, yeah. Um, been been in the making. Like we we've been hit and missed a couple times, but now we're here. You know. Yeah, we finally got it done. <laughs> I think I had a cancel. I think we had like a cancellation on, on each of our parts. Yeah, Something man. came up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Life happens, right? Yeah, that's the thing. You never know. <laughs> and you're coming from far, bro. I never knew that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so Miami's a second home. So I'm I'm probably here about I don't know forty percent of my time frame. You know, the other half I'm about two and a half miles, two and a half hours north of here, Fort Pierce, Florida, a little bitty small town. You know? Yeah. It's home, think- though, yeah. <laughs> Nice change of pace from Miami and Fort Pierce, huh? Oh, yeah. You know, it's 10 miles away, and it takes you 45 minutes here in Miami, you know, 10 miles away, and you're there in three minutes. So it's it's definitely a... Yeah, the uh, Miami traffic is something <laughs> it's else, It's wild, man. It's wild. The Miami traffic is no joke, bro. Yeah, I check out my GPS, especially in this area. I check out my GPS, like, four miles. Yeah, 20 minutes. 20 right? minutes, and it's all depending on the daytime, you know? Like, pfft. Well, I'm, 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 my gym's out in West Miami. I'm at Young Tigers Foundation. So from there to here is probably about a 35-minute to 45-minute drive, depending on the time frame. But it's only like 12 miles. <laughs> That's the thing. It's right there. Yeah, it's, it's right, right down there. US 1. Yeah. Oh, man. How, do you, how, do you, how long have you been training at Young Tigers now? So I've been with, these, with Young Tigers for a little over a year now. Um, after my first fight with the BKFC, which I fought uh, Gustavo Trujillo, um, it was my first fight with the BKFC, my third fight on bare knuckle in general. Um, I lost that fight with him. Um, wild night for me. Um, 17 million viewers, and I got knocked out for the first time in my entire career, my entire life in general. But I'm... It was the best thing that's ever happened in my career, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, it's what every fighter, you know, is nightmare is, oh, we're going to get knocked out or something bad's going to happen in a fight. Um, but it was a moment for me where uh, I was tested. Is, is this really what you want to do? Is this, is this the path that you choose? You know, because I could have quit right after that fight. No one would have blinked the eye. Everybody would have been like, yeah, I get it, you know, you know, moved on. Um, yeah, that's that's not in the cards for me. Quentin's not a part of who I am. Um, but about two and a half weeks later from that fight, um, I got a message from Gustavo. Uh, they knew I was supposed to fight on the card. I was supposed to fight Chris Sarr for the first time. And he was like, hey, man, you know, come down here. We'll talk to Tigre, you know, train with us. We'll, we'll, we'll go through camp together because he was supposed to fight on that card as well. Um, so we went through an entire first camp to fight Chris Sorrow. And, uh, like I said, it changed everything for me being down here, the, the energy level, like, you know, man, you walk into a gym, you can just immediately tell if it's a, if it's the place, um, the energy is, is next level. It's family. You know, like I said, I, I came in and I, we talked about it yesterday, actually at, at training. Um, I came in as an excellent opponent, you know, opponent, like someone you've trained, this gym is trained to, to beat. um, to, to family, you know, I mean, these guys are, are amazing. Tigre, you know, is a five-time world champion, uh, Hall of Famer, uh, and he's trained multiple, you know, uh, world champions already. Uh, we got Luis Palomino there, Tyler Goodjohn's there. Man, a bunch of, you know, amazing athletes. Uh, Tyler Goodjohn, he just had the crazy fight in his last fight, right? For he, BKFC. He and the, did. Was, it, was it here in the Hard Rock or that was somewhere else, So, right? no, that was up in, I think that was South Carolina. Um, he fought Tony Loco Soto. 
uh, went to the went five rounds straight banger. I believe, you know, he owned that entire fight. Um, you know, you leave it to the judges, and that's kind of how things go sometimes. Like I, I want to say he was robbed, but at the same time, you know, if we leave it to them, you know, they're gonna make their decision. You know, we got to make our decision definite. You know, so. Oh, yeah, but then but the thing is, okay, in bare knuckle, I know they want to see, they're all about the finishes in bare knuckle too, yeah, right? But for sure. It's not really like, yeah, that one especially, but man, there's a thing when you get that high, high level though, you know, like, it just sucks when the judges take that fight from you, you know? I don't know if you watched the last UFC, my boy Kai Kara fought. Yes, um, yes. Man, man, I thought he won that fight like Me pretty too. clean and clear, and Me it's just too. like, oh, those stingers, man. I feel like we, oh. There's been, I feel like, a lot of issues in, in what we've... Oh, you know, a lot of bad calls yeah, lately, man. Yeah. It's all the time. You think they'll get it right, but now that's a good thing I wanted to ask you about. Yo, bare knuckle, you guys get paid a boxing fee, or is everybody different? Because I have my boy Allen on here, and he was telling me everybody's that everybody's different. Like, everybody's subcon. Like you, you know, you work through your own contracts. You got yeah. guys, and it's levels to it. You know, obviously, some guys have come through a boxing pedigree or a background, you know, and they're coming from a boxing background. You've got guys that have come from MMA, uh, kickboxing, you know, uh, Muay Thai. So, I mean, you got guys from every every walk of, I mean, you got guys coming off the streets as amateurs, you know, into to the bare knuckle as it's well. It's crazy, huh? Yeah, like they just, they've never had any combat training ever in life, and then they go to a tryout. Um, you know, and some of them are, are, are athletes, so the athleticism in them peaks out, and when they get here, you know, you get you know, you get tested real quick. Yeah, athleticism will last, last a couple of rounds, you know. Yeah, Maybe for one, sure. Athleticism and toughness will get you through the first couple of rounds. But, yeah. you know, five, five two-minute rounds, right, for yeah. bare knuckle? Yeah, which are amazing for me. You know, like I said, you come. I come from an MMA background. And just those rounds, man, they're just hard on my body, you know. Five minutes. Oh, the, the wrestling and the, the getting wrestling, up and the, the going down, up, down. up, down, you know. Um, previous to this, I mean, I can't. I played football most of my life, you know. So I played – I was a 285-pound man. Oh, man. I played defensive line, and I hadn't learned to control any of my breathing, you know. So everything was uh, within uh, t three seconds to, to six-second play. Like explosions, we, we right? get a Yeah, explosion, almost where you're holding your breath. And then, uh, you know, you get a break in between each, each play, you know. So – this is, you know, it was really hard for me to control. Like m most of my, I mean, if I went past the first round, which I finished most of them in the first, like I was probably about an 85% chance I was going to lose the fight because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. because of gassing out and just, you know, we don't realize how serious breathing is. No, no, for sure. And, you know, the bigger you are, the harder, I feel like the more muscle you have, it's almost like sometimes it's a gift and a curse, you know. With the great power and explosiveness comes a lot of like, that takes a lot of energy yeah, and, and, and takes a lot of oil to keep that, to, to keep that going, you know? Yeah, for sure. Of, so, um, for it's sure. The, the training, too. Just, you know, like, we train like big men. If you don't train like a big man and you start actually doing some of these things to condition your breathing and learn these things, like, it's gotten better for me. Like, I'm in – right now, I'm in the best – condition and shape of my life um i'm also not walking around so heavy i don't let myself get past 225 230 and i'm fighting down at 205 okay so that what's 205 called it's called cruiserweight that, that's, we about that's a cruiserweight in for the bare knuckle for us is there anything after that what's after that we got light heavyweight is lower than that's 185 oh, okay um, okay so later, okay that's what i was so thinking. yeah and and you never know you know i make 205 pretty easy you know i mean I, i'm comfortable here i want to make my run here um, but it's 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 a possibility as well. You know, is this the lowest you fought at in bare knuckle? This is the lowest I have fought ever. Um, so I, but, but previous, like I said, I fought a couple fights in MMA at two or five, and they were, were like shaking. I hadn't figured out the science to weight cuts. Um, I still was doing everything not backwards, but I was figuring it out. You know how it goes. You know, yeah, Tri yeah, trial and error. error. Yeah, a lot, man. A lot, a lot of bad weight cuts and good oh, weight cuts. Man. And just yep. Oh my gosh, that's another the name of the game, you know. Yeah, it's, it's but now it's all you know professionalism, and 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 you got a lot of people that know you know about what's going on. So you listen, you learn, and the trial and error part of it all. So, yeah, man. That's yeah. The last fight you had, right? Was that I saw? Was it was it seven? That was seven second. It was in a four minutes. It was like two minutes. And how fast was the last knockout of your fight? It was in the first round, right? No. So the guy that I'm fighting, Dylan Weinmiller, um, on the 23rd, he's coming from a seven second knockout, which oh, in the, that's him okay, did okay, that in the okay. first round. So my last fight. Um, I went three rounds. It was the last punch of the third round. You can't get saved by the bell in BKFC. Um, I broke his jaw. 
So, the, oh. the, yeah, so with the very last punch of that particular round, uh, he was just done, and he couldn't continue, you know, and I split it down the center. So, um, yeah, I mean, oh, bare knuckle. Oh, my know. gosh. How do you like the bare knuckle compared to the um, taking the hits and stuff like this? So, like, uh, uh, so I'm going to – I have something that I call price of admission. All right. In every sport, I believe there's a price of admission. As long as you understand and know the price of admission, you're golden. So when you're fighting MMA, you know, you got small gloves on. You know, you can get kicked. You know, the knees. You, you get what's going to happen. If you throw a kick and you miss, you get taken down. Whatever it is, you like you, you accept it, right? Boxing's the same way. You know, you got gloves. You got 12, 8 rounds, whatever it is. They're three-minute rounds. So bare knuckle is a little different, right? So bare knuckle is, you know, if, if you get touched in your face with a simple jab, you know, you're liable to get cut, you know? Um, if you get blasted, you're, you're more than likely going to get cut up. So accepting that before it even happens. So I know going into any of these, which I've I've gotten stitches after every fight, you know, for bare knuckle, and I've, I've had uh, five of them now. Um, I, I know it's going to happen. I'm accepting it. Like, I'm willing to say, all right, man, no, I know I'm getting cut. No big deal. We're good, you know? Um, the second thing is, you know, boxers in particular, they're so worried about their hands, you know? And this that's a very real thing, you know? So in my mind, and I, I know that I'm, I'm liable to break my hand in these, you know? But I have you have to accept those things before they happen. If you're able to do that, then what's going to happen to you? Nothing that you don't already expect and are willing to, you know, to take. Um, I have broken my hand in one of my fights, um, you know, what are you, six, eight weeks out, you know, it wasn't super bad, I didn't have to have surgery, just cast it up, and, you know, we moved forward, so. Uh, was, wait, you you got it during your fight, like, in the fight, you broke your hand? Yeah, so I broke my hand with uh, Wasi, and I, I even believe that might have been, like, the last transaction as well, came with a nasty overhand, left over on my southpaw, and when I came, I landed on the outside of my hand because of the way I was positioned, um, and I, I just knew it was hurt. And the next day, uh, or in the back, you know, I had to check my hand. I didn't even go to the hospital right away. I didn't go to the hospital till like about a week later. I left from, I think it was a Saturday night. I was in Guatemala on Sunday, you know, you know, a little vacation afterwards, decompress. Yeah. Um, but something was definitely wrong. You never, but you, know, you just let it heal on its own. No, I, I got a cast, man. I'm gonna take if if there's medical things yeah, that yeah, yeah. heal the process up. Uh, why not? Why wouldn't we take these things? You know, so I, I got it casted. Um, I worked around it, not so much punching or anything like that. Just kept up on my cardio. Um, surprisingly, man, it wasn't even my fist that was bad afterwards. Like it was the the weakness of my wrist. Yeah, I think that's the boxer's fracture. I don't know. Like I've had yeah, that one before. Yeah, basically a boxer. Yeah, like crazy, yeah. you know. And then it's just so weak from being still for so long. Oh, okay, okay. But so, but did it like was it your knuckles or like the hand? Like your hand was just mad so, swollen and like broke. So I off. broke this outside pinky, which is the boxer's fracture, and the top of my pinky finger. So damn. Yeah. How long does it take? Broken hands take. What it's saying? Like what? Six. I was eight cast. Weeks, I was saying? casted up for six weeks. Um, okay. And oh, afterwards you have to like then you have to do the rehab after, huh? Like to yeah, strengthen it up and stuff bad, like this. Though, man. I mean, like I said, I didn't, have, I didn't. Have, I've seen some gnarly breaks, man, where they're putting you know bars inside, you know, and I, I'm, I'm grateful that didn't yeah. happen. Um, big injuries keep you out a little bit longer. Uh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm not rushing my career, but I'm, I'm towards you know, I'm, I'm 43 years old, so it's like eight months out is, is a wild, you know, that's, that's like, man, that's almost a year of nothing. So uh, we don't, we it's don't true. want that at this point. So yeah, you want to stay busy, stay yeah, active. I want money if, while if you can. I'm, if, if I can be active, I need to be active. You know what I mean? Um, bare knuckle has been good about keeping me in the mix. Uh, I'm toying with the idea of grabbing a boxing match here and there, you know, um, don't necessarily want to be a boxer. I'm not chasing that dream. Um, I'm a I'm a bare knuckle boxer. Like this is what this is my profession. This is what I'm gonna call myself. This is what I'm doing. You know, I I, I did MMA. I enjoyed it. Uh, it was freaking night and day for me, man. It was so hard on my body. Like I said, the jujitsu, your wrestling, you know, all these things. And I came from behind. I didn't even start fighting until I was 35 years old. Oh wow! That's when you started training. That's when I started training, and that's everything: jujitsu, grappling, everything. You know, like I did. I, yeah, so I had wrestling that's in high awesome, school. Bro. That's yeah. fucking inspirational as hell, man. I so the the life changing. I played football until that year, man. I, I had a heart attack and I died when I was thirty five. Right, right. So like, and I was a big man. 
Um, I was working multiple jobs, you know, taking care of the family, doing all these things. Um, and all of it was just kind of like a, I don't want to call it a hobby, but like a hobby. It was just something I really enjoyed doing. I didn't take it serious enough or anything. But when that, that happened to me, um, you know, I've got four daughters, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it just made me really view things different. Uh, I started doing th- I wasn't, wasn't partying or, or being crazy or nothing. Like I said, it was just the stress of life. You know, life does get in the way in so many different things. Um, I look at things a little bit different now. So now it's like, oh, man, I got to get up and go to work. It's, oh, man, I get to get up and go to work. Or, yeah, definitely. You know, so, so I'm grateful for that. But that was the changing point for me. I, I couldn't play football anymore. I was just too big. It beat my body up too much. Um I went through like a that. What am I gonna do with myself? I, I, I now I call it a I call it like a post fight depression now. But it was kind of like that. What am I do? You know, uh, as a fighter, yeah, as an athlete, we don't know what to do with ourselves as much. You know, we kind of get lost and oh man, like this is life. You know, because that's yeah, your whole thing is about what that. Is, well, for you at that time it was probably everything was about was geared the towards game, football, yeah. the next game, winning. You know, you know, getting prepared for the next season. And, and I wasn't. It wasn't as bad then, but now it's like, man, I get through a fight. It could be a glorious fight, I man. I can have a a, a four round banger. Uh, came out on top, this glorious win. And it's cool for like a week, maybe two weeks. And it's like, man, what what am I doing? You know, oh my God, you're when, so true. When's the next date? And for a while. I thought something was kind of wrong with me, you know what I mean? Like, to be honest, like, I was struggling with a little bit of depression, and it wasn't because I was depressed about my life or what was going on or the people in it. It was just like, man, what do, what do I do with myself, you know? Um, and I, it's like you felt so many highs that it's hard. Like, you're almost yeah. your senses are dull, bro. Like, the regular new mundane doesn't get it going for you anymore. No. So you need that, like, yeah. I mean, think about the that. The winning, bro. The thrill of a win. Nothing can fulfill a human uh, no, more. You nothing. know what I'm saying? More than, like, oh. nothing. That's so, and when I played football, you know, I'm, I'm out there with a whole team. You know, we're talking 45 guys, 50 guys, you know, and you're sharing the field with, with 10 of your teammates and, and, and a t- you know. So it's great. And you, there's so many – fans right but when you're in the ring or a cage or whatever your you know your platform is there it's you and another man and a, and a referee in there you know what i mean and it is just a different animal i've never felt anything quite like it and i think as a fighter we're just that's what we chase we chase that feeling that walkout feeling that that the, hearing your name and I'm, you know, like, I don't know what's going <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be like after it all. So I'm not even focused on I'm focused on it now, man. I'm really, really enjoying my journey. Like, that's what my heart attack gave me. So my, that time and that dark thing that happened in my life really gave me um, the opportunity to just appreciate everything. I'm enjoying the ride, man. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, the scare, like, it kind of makes you appreciate what's important in life. You know, you kind of realize how short and how fast things can go and how fragile and everything it all really is, you know? Man, I, I sat in the hospital for a couple of weeks, man, and I, I didn't want my kids to come up and see me like that. It was just, it was a, it was like a rough thing for me, you know, and I just like, man, like, and I was 35 years old, you know, I'm healthy. I thought I was healthy, you know? Yeah. But, uh. Sure. And then after that, you that's what got you. That's what after, after that, that you started hitting the gym and finding a gym. And so listen, after that, I went to my first uh, local MMA show, which is Rise of the Warrior. It's here in Florida. It's one of the bigger ones, you know, combat. You know, you get it. Yeah. Um, my local show. I love that show. I was first place I ever fought. Um, I went there and I seen all these guys, local guys, people I kind of knew. The crowd was there. The, the crowd was electric. These guys were. Fine. I was like, man, you know, this. This could be it, you know. Why don't I go do this? And I kind of looked at a couple of them and was like, man, I'll destroy that guy. Um, I went to an MMA gym probably within about a week. Uh, some of the same guys I seen fighting that card were there. And I was thinking to myself, I'll smash these guys, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. But uh, listen, I got in there and they beat the brakes off me for about three months. Like I literally, you know, and I'm a tough guy. I think I'm coming from the streets, you know, got a little reputation or whatever. And I just, I'd never trained. So I had, I didn't have combat training, you know. Um, I didn't, the warm ups beat me up, you know. So for like three months, man, these same guys that I said that I would crush, just, man, they, they worked me. They worked me good. Um, but, you know, once again, I left my ego at the door. I came in, I was coachable. 
You know, I mean, uh, you're going to lose until you win, right? I mean, you're not goes, not everybody's man. just going to come in and, and be that guy, you know? Yeah, you got to be the hammer. I mean, you got to be the nail before you're the hammer, you know? Yeah, and like you said, the athleticism got me got me away. My explosiveness got me away, you know? It, it helps me now in my career because I've learned how to use it. But, man, like it was, it was like I said, it was, it was there. Um, and I just I kept coming, and those same guys, you know, we all became family, a small little unit. Uh, and I had I've had I've been in sports my whole life. Like I played sports since I was a little boy. Um, and the brotherhood that, that comes from that, you know, the camaraderie is a lot is, is amazing. So I still got friends from like seven years old playing baseball and football. But this, this sport, you know, combat sports, man, that grind, that camaraderie is just something completely different. Um, it, it's very intimate, you know, like we, we, we sweat together, we bleed together. Um, I try to beat you up to make you better, you know what I'm saying, and vice versa. So it's, it's I've never experienced nothing like it. And that's kind of why I fell in love with this sport as much as I have. Um, um, you, you know, you've been through the, you know, through the motions. You've been a little bit of everywhere. So, like, you've even experienced on different levels than myself. Yeah. So, and you have that. It's going to be there, you know. It's not going anywhere. You're going to see somebody 20 years from now, and you're going to talk about a time, you, a, a t- crazy week of training you guys had. You know, it's wild. Yeah, for sure. I always wonder, because I never played sports coming up, like, as a kid and stuff like mm. this. I never played football. Or, I never played any team sports. Well, I did, but I wasn't very good. And I wasn't athletic as a kid, you know, but... I always wondered, like, um, the there's nothing that compares, right? Like, even winning a team, winning or losing a game with a bunch of people, mm-hmm. it doesn't compare to, like, the the mm. pressure and the feelings and, like, the good, no. the, the, the roller coasters of fight day, right? Something about, like, waking up fight or even fight week, you know? Fight week. So it's fight crazy. week used to murder me. Like, I'd go through my oh, fight yeah? week. Even when I didn't have cuts, because I fought a heavyweight for a while, Um and I didn't have to worry about weight cuts or nothing like that, but just the nerves of fight week and, you know, all these guys are telling you about envisioning this and, you know, seeing all these things and you didn't really understand it. So now you're nervous and you're wondering, now you're second guessing this. Um, but I think that's that's part of the high too, you know? Yeah. So like that, I mean, it's a lot less for me now, but it's still very prevalent, you know? Yeah, it's like the waves. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Like for me, um, coming off, I just had like I, f- I realized I, I, went th- I went through like phases. You know, like my first five fights of MMA it was like all really fast and like yeah, all nerves. Just all, most of it was just trying to control my nerves. You know, like just right. battling the day, like and then trying to perform. You know, but then like and then and then I noticed that after like my first five fights and like from five to ten fights, I saw the fight start to get a little bit slower. And I started to see the game, and I kind of started like be able to think more in between. And then, that's the yeah. That's and then the, like yeah, and then like after like ten fights, I got to like when I got to sign to the one and stuff like this. That's why I try to be like, all right, you made it to like work as hard, like try to embrace the moment because that now it's like all right, like we're tra- You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like try to embrace it and t- take it all in because I knew that like it's your like, journey, like, man. You were saying, we we, journey, lo- we lose it, we lose it. So Can even yes, yeah, so like even now, um, I'll be in the back and. Uh, He'll be working pads with me, and he's amped up more than me, you know. And I'm just like, finally, when we're done warming up, and we're we're in the back, and we're waiting to go out and do our walkout, I'm like, yo, coach, just chill. We're here, man. You know, we're here, and it's it, that feeling's. I can tell my growth now as well because before it would be like, man, I'd just be so shot and tell that particular. Now it's just like, yeah, man, the journey. This is where you're at, man. Take it in. Take a breath. You know, I do lose myself once I walk out because there's so many people, there's so yeah. many lights, you know what I mean? Um, but I don't lose my smile yet. So I'm still very like there. I'm, I'm smiling. I'm happy to be there. As um, soon as they say my name, where I'm from, like you hear my little bitty Fort Pierce town pop up, man, and I just, it clicks. I'm there. I'm tuned in and I'm ready to go. Uh, the, fa- the fights are stuff. I haven't learned to slow those down. I've learned to be patient. But I haven't learned to slow it down yet, like mentally, you know what I mean? Uh, but I guess that's that's part of our journey and our process as well. Yeah, for sure. And, yo, like in the, in the bare knuckles, it's going to be a lot faster too. Like it's a whole other game, right? Like, bro, the way they pu- dude, the way you punch is different. The way you hold your fists, you know what I'm saying? Like you block with like you can like kind of like with yeah. the forehead. And you're aiming, you're kind of like trying to like specifically aim for different spots, right? Like when, you, when you're training for bare knuckle, right? Like uh, – so, are you looking for different spots? Like you're trying to avoid. Is there any spots you're trying to avoid on the head, or are you just trying to hit everything? You know. Um, it's not that I'm trying to avoid a spot. It's whatever spot that I'm actually 
hitting, I want to hit it correctly. And that's I just want to turn my there fist over. So if I punch like this, it's liable to me to get the actual – the boxer's fracture hitting with the end. So we want to rotate completely and try to catch them with those front knuckles. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you catch someone in the top of the head or something like that. Um, I mean, that's the hardest part of the body. But, man, that's price of admission. You know that's what I mean? Price, yeah, that's what we were saying. Price of admission. So when, you, when you're saying the price of admission, when you're talking about, I was going to ask you about that. When you say the price of admission, and you're saying, like, all right, my hands are going to break. When your hands break uh, in the fight, you're going to just you keep punching with the broken hands? You're going to figure out, like, you know what I'm saying? Or like, just has, like every round. If my boy was slapping that for a while. My boy was fighting. Um, the um, com combat grappling? or the He was fighting left way. Oh, for a that, long time, yes, man. With head That's some wild elbows, stuff, man. And it's the same wraps on the hands, like you guys do. But um, he was uh, he some of his hands were getting his his knuckles and were so swollen, and he just started palming the guy. Like he just started fist. Yeah, he was so, doing knees and stuff, but he was like palming them with. I his, mean, it, yeah. you got <laughs> whatever you can work with, right? Yeah, um, I think that just changed within the rounds. I mean, I. I your adrenaline's going so much, unless it's like shattered in there, I think you're still going to be able to do it. I mean, you got a two, they're two minute rounds. You got a minute in between each round. So basically, I mean, what are you walking through there with uh, 15 total minutes? You know, like yeah. that's a whole fight. I mean, if you make it that far, um, your adrenaline really takes over and the mind's wild. But I haven't shattered my hand enough to know exactly how that's going to work. Where, where, I've, yeah. I've, I've broken the hand. Um, just I do, so I, you don't know until it happens. But I think just like everything. So if my jab's not working, you got to change what you're doing. I can't keep going in there thinking my jab's going to win me this fight, right? So we just got to make changes within the rounds, um, and you know, see what's going on in front of you because they're going to tell you what you're going to do. Your your opponent's going to let you know, oh, that's not going to work, but this might work. You know, you just pay attention to it, and it's been my learning curve. It's been what I've been doing, and it's working for me. So. I choose to take the fight to my opponent. I don't want my my opponent to take the fight to me. Like, I want to choose when and where it happens, and I don't want to engage in a brawl. Like, I used to be the brawler. You hit me, I'm moving forward. I hit you, I'm moving forward. Fuck it, let's just move forward. Now it's, man, I want to be in and out. I want to step back, re-engage. Um, and bare knuckle, like, what are we, five, six years in? You know what I mean? It's so fresh, bro. It's crazy. It's so fresh and so much, so many things haven't been utilized yet. You know, the clinch... It really isn't getting utilized as much. And, I mean, I've gone to Muay Thai gyms just to work on my clinch work. Um, and no one's really utilizing it. Now, How about body shots? Not as much yet. Everyone's still head hunting. You know, there's, yeah. there's some guys that are, um, especially once they get put in the clinch, then they'll attack the body. Uh, my last fight, I, I, I just changed levels a little bit because they're all expecting, you know, you're head hunting, you know. And my history shows I am a head hunter. I want to... So this one here, you know, I got about five good body shots, just change the level, just to make you think, you know what I mean? And I don't, it's not getting utilized enough, you know? And when it does, you'll see, you know, the, the, the good thing is um, we get the boxer cups, which are the big pad ones, you know what I mean? So we can have those as well. So okay, that, true, true, true. You know, and if you've got good defense, you can pretty much. Oh, uh, that's where, that's what's up. Yeah, true that. Yeah, man. And you guys got a lot of big stars right now in BKFC, right? We're growing, man. Man, you got Palomino. I think this guy was born for uh, for Bare Knuckle because he's always been a nasty KO artist. Yes. In MMA, one of my favorite strikers in MMA. You know what's crazy? People are so lucky they're fighting him in Bare Knuckle boxing that he's not using his kicks, bro. His he's got kicks. the best kicks. Capoeira, bro. He's he, got he, some he, of the best kicks, bro. The low kick, the shin, oh, the calf kicks are his. Bro, that guy is guy. a marvel. So he's he's forty two years old. Wow. Um, no, I nobody trains as hard as him in the gym. Um, I've trained, like I said, I've had the, the you know I've been able to train alongside with him for the past year year and a half. Um, and man, he trains like a machine. You know, it's very hard, very dedicated, very focused when he's in there. Um, when he's done with his session, he still has another part of his session that has nothing to do with coaching or nothing to do with anything else. He'll do his hand conditioning. Uh, uh, very disciplined, man. Uh, if I was to be able to look up to people around where I'm at, man, he's definitely someone like, that's a real champion, you know, to be honest. Uh, and then he carries himself like one. He's a champion with him every day. So probably, that probably transcends to you big it, time. It does, you know. And if I got questions, you know, like, so I'm young to this sport. I'm young to combat sports in general. So I've, I've got eight years of combat experience, right? Yeah. That's super young. And I haven't even been fighting for the full eight. Um, 
So I got questions, you know, and uh, he's one of the people that I could definitely pick up the phone. Bro, what do you think about this, man? Should I be doing this or should we change this to that? And uh, he's always got an answer for something, you know what I mean? And I'm lucky to be in the, the places that I am and have the coaches in there because I have a coach back home with Byron Zamora, which is where I'm from. He's from Fort Pierce, and I have Tigre down here. Um, you know, most people think that they have a one coach is this idea, you know. But even in MMA, you know, you got your jiu-jitsu, you know, got these different coaches, but I've got two of the best coaches in the game and then I've got teammates and I know this is a single person sport but we're a team you know we're a brotherhood and it really is it's, it's working out really well for me I hope that I'm able to do the same thing for these guys um energy you know I bring energy to the table you know I'm gonna brighten up your room regardless of where we're at and I think that's a big deal itself yeah, for sure, man. You need the camaraderie in training when you get like a tight team and you got guys that you really trust and can really lay it all on the line with. Yeah, man. And you can really start to like then, and you get guys who can help push you and get those new levels, you know. And, help. Yeah. and then for you getting the same with a double champ right now, you know, and then all the other guys he got going on, like you could see, like you know what I'm saying, it's just gonna rub off on you. So their good tendencies will rub off on you. Even you know Gustavo, saying? like I told you, he was my first opponent. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I came down here, my. We sleep at that sleep at his house. We share me. It's not just like I came down here and we just see each other in the gym and go. You know, it's like no man. This is, this is it. You know, um, and he was four and he's four and zero in the actual BKFC, uh, undefeated. Uh, he's doing boxing now. He's getting ready to be three and zero in boxing. Um, you know, all these guys, man. Just it's all, like I said. I'm blessed to be where I'm at. I'm very grateful. Um, but it, it's definitely a, a journey, man. Yeah, that's one of the good things about MMA. Like, people think that, or like, not even MMA, but like martial arts and combat sports, you know, like the unity is strong. And then the, 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 the fight world is so small, you see we're all intertwined together. Mm -hmm. Throughout your career, you're always going to have guys that maybe like you started training with or you end up fighting each other a few years later down mm -hmm. the line. Like, when I was training at Tiger Muay Thai, it's a big gym. You got guys coming off from all over the world. So, mm -hmm. I could be, I've, I've competed with plenty of guys. I've fought plenty of guys. I've trained with guys after I fought them. You know, I've also fought like guys that I've trained with before. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then it's all love, bro. That's the thing. With and through combat sports, like when you compete with somebody, like you know them like differently than mm. just like a regular yeah, mutual high by. How's the it's, weather? It's intimate. This you know is what an I'm intimate saying? sport. You share an experience yeah, together, where it's like you have a newfound respect for each other because how hard you work to get there and how hard that guy works, whether you win or lose, you're gonna have that yeah, same man. admiration for each other. For right? sure. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like you got yeah. you got guys that didn't know each other before they fought. So sometimes there's like an animosity build up, sure. or there's something like that. But after the fight, ninety percent of the time, you know what I mean? It is nothing but respect because you just went through that together. Like that, with you couldn't have went, you couldn't have danced without him. Yeah, exactly. Or her, whoever you know. Especially a hard fight, you know. Yeah, man. So I'm not a fan of like um, I'm not a fan of like too much like. Uh, yeah, like the animosity is getting a little crazy. Like the beef is getting like next level. It's off for the camera. But it's a lot not of it, real. Exactly. It's not. So a lot of it's for the cameras, man. It's like there's a lot of an amazing fighters, but if you don't got a little bit of razzle-dazzle to you, yeah. you're, you're liable to get bypassed, you know. And at the end of the day, so you know, for us it's a sport, but it's entertainment as well. You know what I mean? Um they 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 want that the fans want that and that's really what pays the bills for us like i said this is a sport this is a art this is something that we take very seriously but like if you're just that basic guy who comes in is hi how's everybody doing you know like no one's really like giving that guy the time of day and it's a sad thing when they come to the sport Nah, but it's the entertainment industry bro you gotta have that it factor you know that's what i'm it, saying man, that's it like I started making money and started getting eyes on me when I fucking came out with my hat with the honey badger hat. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. When man. I played it up and people loved it, you know what yeah, I'm saying. For and like sure. it's funny because it feel weird a little bit because I come in real life I might be a little bit like that's not really like how I want to portray, but like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it, it works. Like it has for a time sure. and place and. Um, it's not what you, you know, like, if people want to see you, bro, you're going to sell tickets. And it's not the best fighter that sometimes make the most money, especially in the, it's entertainment. And so you, you get those if factors, like the corner, where, like, people want to see you. You got the good talk. Kobe Covington, man. And you got all oh, Kobe Covington. You know dog. what I'm saying? Like, I mean, this guy yeah. is a phenomenal athlete, He's as bro. good as it gets. Phenomenal. Now, they were ready to let him go from what the, you know, what all the reports and everything saying, man. And he switched to switch, you know what I'm saying? Put on his show, put on a different hat, and... Nah, man, you can't keep him out of your mouth because he's there. You know, he has that it now, you know? Yeah, he was Yeah, he was talking. Oh, my God. <laughs> I like Kobe, though. Kobe's dope, dog. Like, he fucking... I like his style, too, because I'm a grappler, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I appreciate man. the grappler. He could strike, too. You know he what I'm can. saying? He, he's an all-around... Listen, he's an all-around mixed martial arts. That dude is... He's proven that he belongs where he is, you know? Um, 
And he's he's still got some some career left. Do you think he uh, deserves the rematch versus Leon Edwards? Who's complaining? A few people are complaining, right? Or who's yeah. complaining about the Leon Edwards uh, fight? Oh, Gilbert Burns, but he just got knocked off. So I guess that's I guess he's definitely next. I don't think I don't think Leon wanted to fight him or something like that. I forgot. So if this is the thing about that too. So like, no one wants a real rematch. I mean, not a lot of people want. If I beat you. I want to rematch. I want to move forward with my career. You know, oh, but they never fought, right? Leon. No, and... no. Oh, there you go. But you know what I mean. I I like that fight. I think it's a good one. Man. Who do you got? You got a favor in that one? It's if Kobe can uh, put his wrestling to work, man. I think he can control the fight completely. Wrestling wins. Wrestling is owning MMA, in my opinion. You know what I mean. Uh, the grind of a wrestler, I just think it is. I mean, striking is everyone wants to see a striking fight. You know, that's great, but. A wrestling is a controlled fight, you know, and those, I just feel like they're controlling MMA in general right now, you know, and until that changes and we figure out a way to implement jujitsu through your wrestling, you know what I'm saying, get some more submissions, but you're not even getting down there unless you're wrestling. Yeah, but yo, the wrestling for five rounds is kind of like a dying breed, though. That's kind of like going away right now. It's like, go- Colby Collington's like one of the last few guys that's been able to, who else we got? All right, like Henry Cejudo, well, Henry Cejudo, Aljo, okay, Aljo's a grappler. Who we got a flyway? You got Brandon Moreno, who's kind of like more everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got Islam. I thought I thought Volk, I thought Volkanovski beat Islam in that I, fight. I mean, man. too. I think that speaking of wrestling, grappling. So you think that Islam won the Markachov, uh, won the Volkanovski fight? No. You thought he I, won? I, I think yeah, man. Um, Damn. See, yeah, me too. This episode of the Honey Badger Hour podcast is brought to you by the Original Clippers Barbershop, located on 14227. South Dixie Highway. Make an appointment today. You can find them on the Booksy booking app or call 305-964-7882. More than 20 plus years in the game. And that's the original Clippers Barbershop. Master Barbers for a Master Fighter. I think that it's 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 not as exciting as why the wrestling is not like they're not implementing it enough. You know, they're getting pressured, uh, you know, because honestly, so I also think that's not to break the subject, but that's why BKFC and bare knuckles so exciting. So many fans are growing to it. There is no break. There's no wrestling. There's nothing on the ground. It's, it's, Conor McGregor said like, this is from start to finish an exciting sport. It's full of it, bro. But I think the wrestling is still dominant, man. I just think that they're getting away from it because they're not going to make the the money or they're not going to get the fights that they want because the promotion wants exciting fights and they can't sell five rounds of wrestling the same way they're going to sell, you know. Yeah, it's true, man. But listen, it's addicting too. I got my first knockout and then I was chasing the knockout. I didn't stop wrestling after that. <laughs> I retired from wrestling for my fights. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, the last five fights, everybody thinks I'm a striker. I'm like, no, I'm actually a grappler. I just, I got that one knockout. I just want to chase that shit yeah, forever. Man. And it's, but yo, like that's the thing with BKFC. It's like a new revolution, bro, in the it game. Is, and because it's like, it's all the best parts of fighting. Everybody wants to see a yeah, slug. There's no stand him up, ref. Stand no. him up, ref. No. There's none of that no. in BKFC, no, dog. Man. It's the real yes. deal. Um, it's straight fisticuffs, bro. It's it what everybody is. wants to see, yeah, dog. Man. And they're all barn burners, bro. Crazy the, fights. The man. jab. I mean, the simple. The first punch you learn in fighting, the first thing you do, your jab is is devastating in the sport, and it can be. So, like Connor said as well, I, mean, I jab you and I split you above your eye. Now you're bleeding. So now there's a new intensity inside. It's the crowd's going wild. And fast, bro. And it's so fast, you know. Um, you guys start close like this, like like when Yuli got the freaking the knockout. Boom! You guys like you guys yeah, are always like forehead to forehead. Yuli fights right? tomorrow night. He's got a boxing match, man. He's that's this that. weekend, yep, right? Yep. Oh, that's gonna be raw. Damn, that's what's up, bro. Yeah, that's. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. Uh, you said you want to get into some boxing too? Because yeah. it'll be helping good, like, so, yeah, training I, wise, right? Training and busy. So, most training we do is boxing orientated. Yeah. I mean, realistically, you don't train bare knuckle. We're not we're not punching each other in the face. You know, we will put on, like, some MMA bubble gloves and work like that. But we need to be ready for our fights. And if we're walking around with cuts and stuff all over the place, that doesn't really make yeah. a lot of sense. Do you spar with boxing gloves or MMA gloves for a bare knuckle? Um, mostly. Mostly boxing gloves. We do some um, actual small gloves. So I'm going to be honest. Like, I'm, I don't spar that much anymore, man, compared to, like, a lot of these guys that are still super sparring heavy and everything else. Um, I, I probably get, I don't know, man, maybe five full fights through camp. 
like that's it like my sparring it's technical sparring so if i spar it's a lot more technical it's not you know like when i first came down or i first stepped into a boxing gym as to an mma gym you know that's like was real you know real like taking heads off type stuff yeah, you know boxing like, and sparring is very hard in mma man we kind of protect each other you know i mean there are some hard rounds but it was a little different um so uh, when I came down here, I sparred a lot when I was just down in Fort Pierce, you know what I mean? It was a lot more sparring. When I came down here with Tiga, he kind of changed that and pulled it back a little bit. He says, no, we're going to work individually. We're going to do this. We're going to do tecular, technical rounds, um, and then we'll get you the sparring here and there, you know? And it, it, it's worked for me, you know? So all these guys that are out here getting their face banged in, um, you know, that's part of the game. But I think that I'm past that part, and I don't think it's because I'm too good for it. I think that my body just, you know, why am I going to put myself through all that? I played football since I was nine years old. So you got to understand that's how many. That's a lot of concussions. That's right? a lot. I didn't have a lot of concussions, but that's a lot of head trauma, trauma head, to the head. head, head yeah, pants. man. So, um, but yeah, so we spar with both, but probably the 16 ounce gloves, man. Protect each other. Headgear always, you know. That's the thing, yeah. yeah. The little gloves, it's good, but you get to see. Um, um, yeah, so in pad work, we'll, at the end of the day, you know, towards the last few weeks, well, it's either bare knuckle pad work or we're actually doing it with the small MMA gloves. Just because, you know, you got an extra, what, three, four inches of glove on a boxing glove? You know, you, you, your, your timing is going to be off. Your distance That's gonna what be I'm saying. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So when you do the, you wear the MMA gloves for right. the pa for the pads mm -hmm. and stuff like this, right? That's what right. I was thinking. So I think, protect. I think the sparring is more um, for your conditioning. It's a fight simulated, you know, conditioning. You're seeing what it is. You're going to be able to move. Um, but the headgear, the big gloves, that's not bare knuckle, you know, so. That's the thing. Yeah. Oh, and the headgear, I heard um, the headgear will mess up your head movement and stuff like that a little you bit. Because well, your depth of perception is a little bit It's the depth of perception, but then you, you know you got headgear on, so you're a little less, you know. And you're, are you not respecting the punches? No, nah, I mean, you do, but think about that. If I know that I got hit, just like with a glove, I'm going to punch you as hard as I can with a 16-ounce glove. I might not punch you as hard as I can yeah. with my bare knuckle because of that reason. So, and it's not a, uh, uh, you don't realize it's subconscious, you know what I mean? It's just like one of those things, I'd imagine. Yeah, that's true, for sure, for sure, man. And then what about for, like, conditioning your hands? Do you do anything, do you do, you do any type of hand conditioning to prepare for, the fights, like anything, I don't know. I don't. I, I mean, yeah, I don't do any hand um, conditioning. What is like it? A mercury the rice. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I don't like, do the rice. So man, I've, I've worked with my hands my entire life. So okay. I've got that and my benefit as well. So I've got a good strong grip. Um, I don't have. You know, I've always like been in the gym or I've done these things. Never so much conditioning. Now we're punching sandbags. Um, we got go. the the what is it? Mercury board. The mar I've seen it on the... So, on the, so, so we have them at the gym. Yeah, we've got them in the gym. Um, it's like a piece of leather around a two-by-four, and it's kind of like, a, not spring, but it's got a little play to it. Um, and we'll work that. Like, I mean, I've watched these guys punch it until their hands are bloody. Um, <sighs> their knuckles, I, I guess. Yeah, yeah, so... Just trying to build the calluses. I guess you could probably build the calluses on your knuckles. You anything, get strong, just, right? just like, like Muay Thai, uh, you know, in the shins and everything else, thinking. conditioning. Yeah. So it's the same idea. Um I don't do that as much as these guys. I mean, I think a strong grip and learning to punch is just as important as, as doing that. Um, I do. I do work with conditioning on my knuckles and stuff, but I, I, that's not my concentration. Level. My concentration is strong wrist, strong grip, and making sure that I'm punching. I'm turning my punches over. Like, if I'm just throwing wild punches, you know, you're, you're going to – Fuck your thumbs up. You're gonna get boxes fractured. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, bro. You can like end up yeah, like you don't want to be yeah. hitting with the this part of the knuckle yeah. or like backwards. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That would get crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. For sure. Oh man, yeah, definitely. And then yo, you fought. Oh, you fought in the circle and you fought in the triangle. I did. So yeah. So my first my first bare knuckle fight was with BYB. I've actually uh, I fought with him twice, um, right here at the James L Knight Center. Okay, I've been out there. So for it's, 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 it's a cool, another cool venue, man. Gotta, yeah. love, gotta love Miami, man. Miami's dope, bro. Um, Hell yeah. Uh, I, it didn't feel that small. Like, I'm big. I feel like I really, 
I own my space is the way I'd like to say. I like I feel like I own my space. So if we're fighting in a telephone booth or we're fighting in the big circle, you know, um, and I didn't have as much movement back then either. You know, like I said, I was pretty much a forward movement guy. That's when you were just training before Adidas then? And the before, BLE. yes, before I trained, before I moved over and made the train, I didn't move my feet as much. I didn't have quite as much head movement. I was still working on that with my coach down, you know, for Pierce, you know, and he yeah. already changed from night and day. You know, uh, MMA, your head movement's a lot different. There's no big rolls because you're going to get kneed in your face, you know. You're worried That's about true. getting kicked. When you take that away, so now, man, head movement slips, pulls, all those things change, you know. Oh, you can really. Uh, yeah, you can move a little you bit. You can get low. Low, low, super right? low, like super yeah. Super low for the very, uh, and then coming up on top mm -hmm. like this, you know what I'm saying? And no one's expecting it because they're all head hunting. So if I'm fighting another guy that's usually around my height, I'm six two, so they're either the five ten and up. You know, they're not punching. You know, down. You know, they're they're still trying to head hunt. You know, yeah, so that yeah, head yeah, movement definitely. comes into play. Yo, BKFC is making like a blow up right now. So Connor was at the last show. Did you watch the? Did you watch the Rockhold? I did, so the, I did, I did, um, I did. Yeah. The Rockhold Perry fight. Is that your what weight class? Is that your weight class? No, I think they fought that at eighty five. I think it was eighty five or seventy five. I'm I'm not exactly sure. Um, that's not my weight class. Um, I Is think it, Rockhold's fought at two hundred five. Two hundred five. Yeah, two hundred five before. Um, that fight went how I thought it was going to go. I thought Rockhold was going to be stronger than Perry, but not mentally is strong you know they say that he has a dog in him but <laughs> the, this this sport definitely requires that it's not um you're not padded you're not getting hit with the gloves and no one knows what that feels like until you actually get hit it's just like oh oh huh. and either it's okay or it's not okay but you're gonna know immediately and you see it all the time like you see some of these guys actually get cracked and it's just like nope i don't want none of this and then they're done um yeah and perry's Perry's a dog, man. He, he 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 takes some some heat and and will give it right back. So that's definitely in his corner in this this aspect of the game. Without without that, which you can't teach and you can't coach that, you won't make it in this sport. You know, you could be the most sound technical guy there is, but you're gonna come across somebody you're gonna beat on for a round or two, and he's still coming at you. And what are you gonna do? You know? Um, yeah, man. I definitely. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what bare knuckles like. Um, bare knuckle, I think, um, shines a light on the most on the on the dog of the fight. Mm. We're like in, in fighting, right? You have like all these aspects of fighting. You know, you have athleticism, you got heart, and you got right. technique, yeah. right? Those are like the three, right? Like right. Uh, technique, heart, and then like boxing. You can be really athletic, really good technique. Yeah. You can be maybe go, you know what I'm saying? You can go really, really far. I mean, I don't know all sports, but I feel like every sport like kind of shines in on one. But for like bare knuckle, like the most thing you need this, is the, the fight of the fight yeah, of the fight. Because so like you were saying, it, those this knuckles is, is its different. own sport. So you've got it's, guys. Yes, yes. You've got guys coming in that were world champions and big contenders in boxing, you know, and you got guys coming in that were big, big, big MMA names, you know what I'm saying? They come into the sport. It's just, it is its own entity. Um, yes. And it's it's proving that, you know, it's proven that. So, like I said, you got guys that come in, had an amazing boxing career, world champion. You got amazing guys that come in from MMA world, you know, caliber level guys, and they're just not, it's not their, it's not their sport. So when I say, you know, I, I come from an MMA background, but I'm a bare knuckle boxer. This is my sport. I have found my own in this sport. So yeah, and, and it's dope to be able to say that to be such a, a new sport. I feel not that I'm uh, the OG of the OGs, but I'm gonna be one of the pioneers of this sport. So and it's it's pretty fucking dope, man. That's what I'm saying. That's why I like talking to all the. That's why I want to get like more BKFC. I want to get more bare knuckle guys. Yo, I feel like right now you guys. Are like the old school MMA guys, bro. You guys are like the coming up, the coming man. up, like the Mark Coleman's, the yeah, freaking the, uh, the, uh, the Mark Coleman. You know what I'm saying? Vanley Silva, Vitor mm. Bell. Like you know when they when they yeah, like man. coming into their owns. You know, even before that, this is like bare knuckles. This is like back when they were fresh, wearing bro. fucking. This is UFC wrestling, one, bro. This wrestling is, shoes. This is Hicks and Gracie yeah, versus a wrestler yeah, dog. Man. So like. You guys are at the limelight. You guys are at the forefront right now of a new revolution, bro. I went to a bare knuckle. I went to the BKFC fight in the Hard Rock. That shit was lit, bro. Lit like the yeah, crowd man. was electric. It is electric. Yeah. Sold out. And you know what I'm saying? It's, it's growing. Beautiful presentation too. They do. I saw Chad Mendez. Yeah. I saw Perry. Yeah, I saw everybody fight. That was a great night, dog. So yeah, they 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 they're doing amazing, and they're learning. So this is a learning curve for the promotion itself. Like these guys are putting all this stuff together as we go too. You know. Um, and they, they do a really good job, you know, 
luckily we've got the sports that have come before us, you know, kind of paved the way as far as the promotion or, you know, the, 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 yeah, the, yeah. The, you know, the engineering part of it all. So they make it what it is. It even has like a WWE feel with the walkout, with the walkout, with the psh, yeah. but that's how 1FC is. 1FC feels like very like that, like with the big stage. I like what 1FC is doing, actually, man. Um, They're doing big things right now, dog. They yeah. just had a show in Colorado. You watch, you watch, do you follow any any of the 1FC so fights? I, and stuff? I, I, I don't follow as much MMA or boxing or as much as I previously have because now it's all like, man, when I'm watching fights, I try to. I'm watching my fight, like my gotcha. art and what I want to do. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 school. I'm in school, so I'm, I'm learning. You know, thousand percent. And uh, I remember a point in my life where, like, man, I I watch football all the time. Now I can't. I don't even watch a football game no more, man. You know, it doesn't. Like, it, doesn't it just doesn't hit. It hits different. It when hits when different. You fight, right? Yeah, man. And I want to get all of it I can. And this is free education. This is oh man, look at that slip. Look look how he up thrusted that jab, man. Like. Whew. So you think you can study boxing would be the best thing for you to study right now, right? Because even though it's bare knuckle, that's the closest. That's the closest uh, sport um, for you to. Like, yes, that's the most that you can yeah. take from. You know what I'm yes, saying? but we've also developed um, a pretty extensive library in bare knuckle. You know what I mean? Like we've got five years of bare knuckle that you can kind of go through as well. The boxing is always, you know, that that's the base of our sport because we're bare knuckle boxers. But, they, but yo, technically, you were the first ones. Bare knuckle. We're going back, dog. We went bare yeah. knuckle. We went boxing. Yeah, we went kickboxing. Sure. Yeah, we went man. Muay Thai MMA. And now we're back to the freaking what's what's before uh bare knuckle. What's when what can bring it bare knuckle, bare knuckle MMA, I guess, would be the next one before bef the, the level if you peel it back, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And the, but know, people don't want to see the ground, dog. That's the thing with the regular folks, yes. dog. But um I think Game Bread's doing some good things, man. I mean, uh, it just it well, once again, it slows the fight down, you know, in America in general. We're going to say America, you know, because uh, violence and sex, you know what I mean? Like, these are the, the main sources. That's the reality. That's it's, the main that's life, dog. That's it's the everywhere. main source of entertainment, man. So Kitties it's like, and fighting, bro. We want to see. <laughs> yeah, so nobody, no, <laughs> nobody wants to see, a, 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 you know, a, a wrestling match. They're Not just, too much, though. Except for the fans, you know, the fans and the actual – um, Athletes, uh, maybe like a grappler, yes, like yes, we like watching grapplers. Yes, like I yeah. like seeing Kobe, Kobe doing grapple and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like boom, just like the, uh, there's a lot more jujitsu coming out. The combat jujitsu now. There's combat karate. You know, there's just a lot of you know. I heard that was a good show, man. I heard it's oh, uh, yeah. but when was there? Luke, yeah, you know, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, my buddy invited me, and I thought he, <laughs> I had a friend from comedy be like, "Yo, you want to check out this combat karate? I got some takes." And I was like. <laughs> I don't want to watch no karate, but then I heard it was a pretty dope event, bro. Yeah, this guy made a they're, post about it, and I saw like a lot of big stars. I think, you know? uh, Bash Root, uh, Bash is Bass Root, uh, the commentator for it. No. Oh, he was the that. Oh, I remember him talking about that on the Joe Rogan a long time ago. Yeah, bro. man, that was like, he was just recently on again talking about it as well. So, um, I mean, they're they're putting some of the old, you know, the guys that have been in the sport for a while in these good spots, you know, which is kind of cool too, because now after fighting, you know what I mean, you're still. In the game to some yeah, extent, and definitely, I, that's man. super dope, man. But what's the rules on combat karate? Do you know, like, just specifically, I or I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know all the rules. Um, the fight still happens once one of the guys falls. I mean, you know, you can't. There's no grappling, so there's still like heel axe kicks. You know, you're still able to kick. You're, if they're on that wall, because you know they've got that kumbate. What's the the, the, the uh, blood? The, the kumbate wall looks like. You know what I mean? Yeah, my boy fought. My boy fought a lot, which is like this Malaysian tournament, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, Bro, he won ten racks. He won ten Gs in a in a one salat tournament. And it was like this ridiculous. It was like this Malaysian martial art, but you can do everything. It was like full MMA, yeah. but they fought in one of those like circles, it's, like a pit, like a pit. The cold. It's like a it's like a sunken pit. Yeah, that's you know kind of it's kind of what it is. You can like too. run off the wall and kick and yep. stuff like yeah, this, right? Yeah, man. That's wild, yeah. And there's there's just so many things that we're just unaware of, right? You've been all over the world, so you know, man. Like it's just even over in Thailand, it's just a different culture. It's a different. You know everything, so there's a lot of stuff that we don't even know that's that's really popping. They got fighting. They they got fighting down to a T over there. They really mastered it in uh, Thailand. Like just the whole art of fighting, the whole culture behind it. It's just so beautiful. It's hard to explain. Like it's anybody a real who's culture. been there, it's a real culture. There's none of this bullshit. Like there's none of the stuff that you see nowadays. Like. I don't know, maybe just, I mean, I feel you to sell tickets, but, like, there's none of that. And, like, no. in Muay Thai, bro, it's, it's, they do, they come out, they do the Y crew, which they do the dance where they pray mm, to their god, yeah. like, the fight gods, you know what I'm saying? And, like, um, and then they, they fight from, like, five years old. So, like, you got kids yes. that will go with their, you got, like, little 13-year-old kids getting, like, their haircuts. You see them, they all, like, they got a fresh fades. Mm -hmm. Their families are there. 
And I just I remember like one my I remember just just you see this all the time. I saw the the two, the two kid fight. There was like a big kids fight where they had like a big bet on them. Mm-hmm. You know when they when they wear the um, when they wear the necklace with the money around yeah. it, like the kids like the flowers yeah. and stuff. That's yeah. usually the bet. The winner wears it, you know. But I remember the, the coaches will bet on the to these two yeah. kids. <laughs> these two kids had like a big bet fight, you know. But they were like man, they were pretty young, you know what I'm saying. And then after the fight. The kids hug. They hug each other. It's a decision they're, fight because they're not really hitting so hard that they don't really knock each other out too much right. for the kids. But, bro, we're talking about 10, 11 years old fighting with shin pads and elbows. And, I've and seen some Muay Thai. Of it's pretty real, man. And then after the fight, the kids hug and then they post pictures. And then the parents from both teams are making the kids go together. And t- so it's just like, it's very beautiful to see like parents watching the kid, like parents with their phones taking pictures of the two kids that just fought each other. Yeah, you know? man. And then now where you see adults are like, yo, I'll take you out, you know, like we're all yeah, fight, trying to fight at the weigh-ins. For sure. You seen those weigh-ins? Uh, there was one recently where the weigh-ins, the guy got, boom, he pushed, oh no, the push, and he flew. Yeah, there's a guy, they, they've oh, guys the that have Haney not did one been did able that. to fight. They've, they've David heard, Haney uh, pushed Lomachenko real yeah, bad. Yeah, bad neck injury from the from the push, man, that's wild. Oh my God, did you watch the Lomachenko fight, David Haney? That was a straight <sighs> dog. That was a straight robbery, right? Yeah, robbery, man. I, I want to say that boxing, too, man. fuck, man. It's I never watch it, and when I, I do some shit like that, always happens. I though. feel like boxing is becoming a dying sport because it's getting sucked up by the politics. You know, it's owned. Uh, you know, and, and and I'm I'm just really getting an inside view of some of it, and I have a better understanding and how. You know the opponents and uh, contenders, and then you know you've got the opponents for the opponents, and they're all owned by the same people. So it's yeah, bro. And I love boxing. I love watching oh, boxing. Man, I love too. the walkouts. Like the, the Javante Davis fight, the uh, Ryan Garcia fight was amazing, bro. Like the walkouts and the, the stage, the the ring was so dope. But and they're they're really like they're fucking it up so bad. Yeah, this bro. is how crazy boxing has lost the plot. The YouTubers are doing it better than them. Yeah. How are they ruining the sport? Not ruining, but like, how are they watering down the sport so bad that Jake Paul is putting more entertaining and better produced fights? Because it's entertainment. You, you know, because it's entertainment, it dog. Because they understand what sells. And but yeah, dog, the judging is so bad. I've only seen Lomachenko fight twice, and both times, you know, he lost. I've been hearing about Lomachenko. You know, like I've seen him live, and then um, damn, dog. I also think, man, the boxing careers are wild. So like, you, you go. You know, there, there's a build up to it. So you're ten and zero, or you're fifteen and zero, and you end up with like one loss, and it's like you're done. You know, you're you're no longer uh, a competitor for 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 to be a number one. It's and it's crazy, crazy, right? But MMA, like they were just saying, you know, um, yeah, that's what's good about MMA, dog. It's gangster. Bro. You lose your title, come right back and win, and the story's so much bigger now because bro. now I just like redemption, you know. But they're not even giving these guys like. It's one and done. Like, you lose and it's a wrap. You know what I mean? So I think even the pressure for that, and that's why the big fights aren't happening no more because they don't want these two guys to fight yet because there's so much more money to be made on their fights in the next yeah. five years. But if they fight right now, man, it's that's a real fight. Like, that's the fight that they both deserve. But they're pushing it because there's just money to be made behind it. It wasn't always like that. You think it started like that with the Money Mayweather thing? Because if you think about it, back in the... Back in the day, De La Hoya, Hopkins, remember like the Four Kings days, all these guys, you yeah. all used to fight. Uh, they, um, yep. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, mm-hmm. uh, Hagler, uh, yep. um, Sugar, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Like all these guys, oh, boom, bum, bum, bum. They always fought each other. They always went against each other. You had uh, Roberto Duran, yeah, you know what I'm man. saying? And, those were and they the had days. L's, bro. Were... Look at Ali, bro. Ali would lose, come back, lose, come back, yep. take big L's, you know what I'm saying? Ty- so... It's weird, but then like ever since that, ever like with the with the records, are the records like forty no, twenty no? They're just trying to get the numbers game, and the numbers game is a lot of smoke and mirrors of boxing, especially we know records, bro. You can fight, you can get to fifteen and zero pretty good. You know what I'm saying? If you fight the right people and you have the right management, yeah, the money, money behind you, management, money. You know, that's kind of how it goes. I think that's how it goes in general. So management is a big deal in sports. Period. You know, it's the need that representation. Um. Just because we, we want to fight. Like, you know, sometimes we don't make good decisions, man. We're like, oh, yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Now, our ego our ego makes a decision for us. For sure. But like, so, a lot of fights you shouldn't take, you know what I'm saying? Or, like, maybe for whatever reason, just, you know, there's managers that will know, you know what I mean? If you get the right manager, they'll yep, put you in the same yep, position. Yep. But some managers will also just, you know, want to take, some, just match you up. They'll match you up with their own guys that, and just that, so they can that, make the that, money. That's you know? what they are doing, and that's how they're doing it. Like I said, the, the build-up. gets paid twice. The, the, the build-up for it. So, 
um, as a you got your contender and then you got your opponent, right? So your your contender's getting his career worked up. So now he's 25 and 0. You know, you've got your opponent, right? So your opponent still has to have some type of record, you know what I mean? Just so he can be on the same contention level as this guy. So your opponent's getting the opponent uh, for the opponents to get worked up. So now he's building up his confidence, making him feel like he's really the one. Now he's uh, 19 and, and 0, you know, feeling like he's – but he's only fighting the opponents too. He's not fighting any contenders. And he's really only getting set up to fight the contender. And what happens when if he wins? He's still owned by the same manager. He's still owned by the same, you know. So there's no – they don't lose, you know. They're not losing in that situation. But it's all just – this is a numbers game, man, you know. Uh, this is more, the moral of the story, we got to become managers, dog. Get, <laughs> we gotta, get all that fighting. But, bro, bro dude, yo, kids, don't waste your time going to the gym oh, and working man. hard and chasing a good effort. <laughs> get Become a lawyer and just manage us dumb fighters, bro, and make double paid, dog. <laughs> Triple paid, man. You know? oh, and never get punched in the face. Yeah, don't get hit, bro. That's where it's at, man. Yo, you got four kids, bro. Four daughters. I've got four Are little shoot girls. Shoot for number five. Oh no, man, we're yeah, I'm done. You know, I've I've got them. They're amazing. They've they've checked. Man, I was a knucklehead. Um, uh, they saved my life. Um, I had my first daughter in 2006. Isabella, Daddy loves you. Uh, she's 16 now. So, a part of my story is I I, I came home from prison in 2006. Man, I did 10 years. Straight out of high school, I fucked up at a really early age, being a punk ass kid, <clears throat> you know, um, no blame to nobody else, running with crowds, doing dumb shit. Yeah. Um, so I tell her like we were like we, we were we were born in the same year, you know, we're both new in two thousand six. Uh, so I, that was my first, you know. I've got Isabella, you know. I've got um, Victoria, Stevie, and Cheyenne. You know, it's. Uh, 16, 13, 11, and 8, you know, so. Oh, so they're almost there, though. They're almost self-sufficient, oh, right? Yeah, right. With the, all the best <laughs> on other teams, yeah. bro. Oh, my so, gosh. Yeah. It's got to be crazy right now. Um, It is. It's a little wild, Um, but it's 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 part of my journey, man. I'm super blessed. It's probably good motivation. Amazing motivation. It's uh, lets me see into myself, too. You know, we get, we, as a fighter, you're super selfish, man. You know, when you got kids, it's, you know, it's, it's a little hard to be selfish, and girls don't allow it because they're all selfish, you know. Yeah, they're going to high, they're going to school, right? They're like in high school right now, stuff yep, like yep. this. Um, so I've got my oldest is high school. Um, the 13 year old just going into high school. Um, my 11 year old's about to become a middle school, and they're all born at the end of the year, so they all like start late you know i guess oh, i got you yeah, yeah, yeah you know um but it's it's pretty amazing man and they're all different they got their own little character you know one of them's super girly another one's you know she's a little more tomboyish plays little sports um so it's just you know it's amazing man you know yeah probably good, good motivation for when you fight too you know what i'm saying um yeah so i'm gonna be honest i don't i don't use them for my motivation to fight um, everything else I do in life is that's that's them. You know what I mean? Man, I fight for me. I'm gonna be complete. Like I told you, this is selfish. Like even the, the money that I make, you know, that's cool. I pay my bills. I'm able to to get my kids braces, but I, I fight for me. You know, uh, that's just, that's the honest truth. You know, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, I do this for my kids, or I do this to support my family. Man, to be real, I I make a good living doing a regular full time job if I want. Yeah, you know, there's not a fuck ton of money in fighting, man. Unless you're that top fifteen percent, you know, you're not really making it. And even when you make a lump sum, you're coming away with maybe sixty percent of that. You know, you're paying your coaches, your management, like kids. <laughs> if you think that you're gonna come in and become a you know a professional athlete, a fighter, and you're gonna make millions of dollars, man, and you want to chase your dreams, I'm not stopping you from doing that. But it is a real road, and it's not really like what everybody thinks, you know. Um, it's very grueling. It's, it's. I mean, I, I sleep in a dormitory in a gym when I'm down here. You know what I mean? I, I, it's my dream. So I'm living my dream, and there's you can't put a price on that. So it's it's everything that I choose and I want. But it's not this glamorous 
Conor McGregor lifestyle, you know, this Money Mayweather lifestyle. You know, yeah. you're not out here driving Lamborghinis and doing that. And, you know, and you could. I'm not saying you can't, you know, because if you work hard enough and you push, you know, do, and anything is possible. You just got to want it, right? For sure. But, but it's, you got to do it for different reasons. You got to yeah. want to do it for something different. Yeah, man. If that makes sense, yeah, right? Yeah, because you, you, that can't be the reason, you know, you just... Yeah, but they say that about anything, right? Like, if you want to do anything, you got to be able to do it for free before you can do it, before you get paid for it. Yeah, you know? I but, agree. But in this game, yeah, dog, it's a lonely road for it, sure. You it know is. What I'm saying man, it's a road less know, traveled, definitely. It definitely is. I think that's what I love about it. I like, I like to do the things that most. That's people what I'm saying, think. dog. Conquering those demons. I don't know. For me, like, there's nothing better than preparing for a fight. Like, I feel like that's when I'm operating at my best. You know, like my me brain too. is at its best. Yeah, you know, man. like I'm. I'm firing on all cylinders. You know what I'm They're, saying? The goal's set. You know it's there. Like I said, that 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 post fight thing that I have. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah, goes yeah. back to I was that. Ask you, yes. Ready for your fight, man. It's just I'm on all cylinders. I'm focused. <sighs> I have a date. I have a time. I have a target. Everything that I mean is super planned, even if it's not planned. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's the thing, yo. When fighting, you have to have that like short term memory and get in the gym right away and have that fight because you want to be living off that last one. Because that's yeah, true, man. man. That post fight depression yeah. is fast, man. You get that big high and then like a week later, you're just like, what's next? It's you know real, what I'm like I and said. And it's hard to replace it, bro. You can like go out and like you can go out like and party and stuff, but it's like it's, it's not, not the even same. that. That's and then, a like void. you're trying to compensate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're that's just what, to oh, fill the that's void. why you're fucking. That's what's happening, bro. Because yeah. I've had some. Set, that's happening to me. Right, like a huge win. And I'm like. You try to go out and relive that night from after your fight. Yeah, it's like, bro, that yeah. night was over. That's it. Dog. You gotta and it doesn't come back, and you aren't really situated until you get like the next date. Like yes. that. As soon as you figure out, or you get a phone call that they're talking about, hey, we, we want to set you up with such and such. You know, what do you think about this? You know, yeah. So now everything's lit back up. But in between time, like I thought something was wrong with me. I thought, you know, like I, I, I mean, I've had, you know, some depression times in my life you know let me go through life and i thought like man what's going on like why, why? every time you know and finally like i, I spoke to a couple of, tyler goodjohn is one of the, the guys that i spoke to about this and i really like had deep conversations about all this you know he struggles with a little bit of mental health things and stuff like that so it just it was relatable you know and when you have someone yeah. especially as men we don't normally talk about problems or issues that we have. Like we've kind of been prone to t taught not to be like that. We have to be tough and we can't talk about those things. Um, but I was given the opportunity to have these conversations. It's like, man, so I'm, it's, it's just this, I'm figuring out what it is. And now because I have an idea of kind of where it's coming from, I'm able to kind of work with it a little bit better. Um, and I, I really feel like a lot of fighters deal with this. You know, I don't think this is a, a one or two guy. I think, probably the majority if not all you know i mean especially if this is your career and this is what you're doing in your life you know yeah well the thing is with fighting too fighting is like any of those other wild careers it's like the average guy is not gonna do it you know oh, what i'm no. saying the so average like, guy is gonna, gonna stay a week in the so gym usually fighting comes from something dog you know what i mean it comes from some type of darkness or like a lot of times yeah. from whatever it is everybody's Different, you know, you have guys that like I've met friends that like I know guys that like they grew up like in a fighting family, like boom, boom, mm -hmm. you know, like their dad's right. martial artist, they were in Taekwondo right. or whatever. But then you also know some guys that come from the gutter and this is like their way out, yeah. You know, some people come from like some crazy past, you know, like I have my butt, you know, like one of my buddies, I always felt like he was like one of the best fighters I know, and he was like born for it, you know, but like yo, he used to get his fucking, he used to fight, he grew up fighting his dad, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I mean, like, yeah. Everybody has like a crazy. Maybe you know, he's so, still fighting his dad. Exactly, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. Thing, yeah. That's like his out. So when they get in the ring, you know, uh, so I call it. That's why I call it training and stuff. That's why I like it so much. Like exercising those demons, bro. When I'm not training consistently full time, then that's why that post the post the post fight depression. The best thing to do is to get back in the gym, have 100%, that goal. It's like therapy, bro. Like. Yeah, man. Once you get all that, uh, like, it's that bad juju out, right? Like, you feel more relaxed. Yeah. Like, after, like, um, idle hands. Bro. So it's idle hands, idle mind. I, idle hands is the devil's playground. I had a boss tell me that. Yeah. That's the truest yeah, statement I've ever heard in my sure. life, bro. You, you got to be moving and grooving, dog. I, I think that's on so many different, on all levels, right? I mean, uh, people that deal with addiction, you know, let's just if because you're idle and you're bored. So now. Yes, I, bro. So, that's so, what it is, but man. If, if you were constantly doing something and you uh, made yourself some type of 
schedule or, or something, you know, you, you have an idea what's going on, but when you don't have nothing and you wake up in the morning, you don't have a job to go to, you don't have any real responsibilities. So now oh, what do I do? You know, you fuck off, dog. fuck off. And you know, and when you fuck off, you fuck off. And then when you fuck off, you feel inadequate because you know, you're not doing God's work. You're not, and what I mean by yeah. God's work is, you know, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And I don't Facts. know what that is. Everybody's different. Dog. Everybody, yeah, I agree. Whatever you're supposed to I do agree. is different, right? I like agree. for me, I know what I need to do, but everybody's like, you know, I've got a friend. He's never trained before. Yeah, his and he's not feeling good. He's feeling inadequate. Well, obviously, his thing's not to be, be to go to the gym and right, train five right, rounds in sure. spar. But like for me, I know you know what I'm saying. But I think the gym dog? is the answer, though. I think the gym is the answer. Even dog, for, it really I is. think I think it's the answer for the people that aren't even ever in the gym. The the guys that sit behind are the women and men that sit behind a computer, and that that's how they make their living, or they speak, or like it's just the gym is an outlet, you know. And uh, I go to the gym, and I go to the gym with a million things on my mind. But while I'm at the gym, I have zero things on my mind but what I'm doing, you know. And it's I love it. It's 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 my therapy. It's my uh, it's my place where I can go, you know. Um, I had this talk with Palomino like a couple, a few about a month ago, man, about the same thing, you know. When we come into the gym, it's like, man, I left all that shit at the door. Like that shit, like I, we step in here, and it's. It's business. It's not even business. It's just time. You know, you're there. You're getting it in. You're 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 going through the process, and your everybody's process is different. But you're present, very present at that particular moment because you can't afford not to be. Exactly because you fucking the minute you think about something else, you get punched in the nose, dog. <laughs> oh man! The minute oh. you think about what's going on at the cribbo, fucking baboons, fucking jabbing your ass. You're like, oh yeah, boom! Yeah. I gotta move my head. You know what I'm saying? Or your coach is telling you something. So like. And I feel like that's why we're so lucky that we get that therapy because um, how many people get that thing that they can think you can sh we get to you have to shut your brain off. The only way to do it effectively and efficiently is to turn your brain off yeah. and to be on that idle. And I think that's like where that uh, flow state. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We always talk about that on the podcast. Always, that's, that topic comes up a lot. You know what well, I'm saying? Grappler and the flow state there. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> the go. flow. You know, Saint, e even sparring. And, uh, that's what I'm touching, saying, bro. Yeah, Nothing. Man. I, for my for me the best set my favorite session of the week is sparring bro after like a hard like after like like with the homies you know yeah man you feel good dog you get that feel good it, it's usually the decision day, making is a little bit easier the after. days that I didn't want to go for those days and I finished those days those were the best days it's like man I didn't even want to come today but I knew we were sparring I didn't feel like get punched in the face you know yeah. you get through that day it's my like, thank God I came today man like to, this was it you know um, bro yes exactly though the days. Fuck, I hear this guy says it all the time, bro. Like, the days you don't want to go, those are the days that are the most important. Most you know what I mean? important. It's easy bro. to go to the gym. That's yeah. what my friend, uh, my coach used to always tell me. That's why motivation is like, you know, motivation is fickle, bro. You, right. You know, if you only go when you're motivated, you're yeah. always going to win. You're going to always beat the guy who only goes when he's motivated. Right. The discipline is when you do and when you don't. And when you don't, that's when you need to do it the most. Exactly. That's um, when you get the most gains out of it. Uh, you know? Yeah, and you find your weaknesses, and then those are the things you attack exactly, even harder. Bro. You know, like Boom. I, so yeah, and that is discipline, man. And I, I, I don't think that I had it in my younger days, man. Me either. Like, I, like, I, like even when I played football, I mean, I had a natural ability. Like I was just super explosive. I'm really athletic, um, but I didn't even push the envelope, man. Like I, I you know, I. I had fun. That was what it was. Now it's I'm still having fun, but I'm pushing the envelope, and I go when I don't want to go. You know, because you know, without that, I'm gonna take tomorrow off too. Like, and the stakes are grave. You know, and yo, getting fucking finished in front of your family and friends is like the most. You know, like yeah. you don't want to fucking you know, seventeen like you million lose. viewers, bro. So it's like you don't want any of that. It's like in that's how we opened with this front. Yeah. Yes, but look, that's hype. But look, look at the growth that it made. Yo, the worst situation brought out the bit. Now you're training at the with the best coach. I'm it sure, brought the best. Bro, you're training with the two time champ now. You know that door might have opened it. If you would have never fought this guy, you maybe would have never got the one hundred percent. One hundred. You would have just been another opponent until you guys fought. So one, what if you fought in three years from now? You would have gone this whole time never meeting them man. and training with Deegan and making those you bonds. Know, you know what I'm yeah, saying? And I didn't let my ego take control because most people can't get past something like that. You know, um, man or woman. You know, that's a hard pill to swallow. Uh, luckily for me, that wasn't the case, you know, and I'm here and I've had more growth in the past year and a half than I've had my entire combat sports career, you know. And like I said, I train at multiple places, you know, and it's just, it's without that, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be sitting across from you. Yeah, um, there you go, man. Uh, you know, and I got some big things coming. Like there's some, you know, I, I'm going to get through this fight. Um, 
What's the date on that again? So that's where we are. I'm going to drop this probably this week or the week right after. So just leading All right, up, so we are going uh, so. June 23rd. It's a Friday at the Hard Rock, nice. um, Seminole Hard Rock Hotel um, in Hollywood, Florida. I'm going to try and get it. I'm going to have to go to that one. Yeah, and Palomino is the main event, right? Palomino's fighting James Lilly. That is going to be a good fight. That's a lightweight or a featherweight title I've, that's on the line. He's, I think they're at 55. I think, okay. I think it's 55. Man, you're excited for this one, huh? How's the training camp been going so far? Ready to go? Rock Tra- and roll? Yeah, man, I feel I feel super strong. Um, so we're about two weeks out, two more weeks of hard training, and then fight week? We're, no, we're two weeks out in general. So, so one week of fire hard training? So one week of hard training left, and then it's just, you know, cutting a couple pounds and, you know, flow state, like you said, and then we're in the mix, man. Hey, then you get to... Live the dream, baby. You know what I'm, I'm living the dream Live, now, bro. but that's the you know that's the that's where we get paid. So um, I don't get paid from a paycheck. Okay, that pays bills. That's cool. That's amazing. I'm I'm appreciative, but my payment is what happens in that ring on June 23rd. That's the payment. You know, my man. Um, How can people catch the fights if they want to see it? Um, you can go to the BKFC app, uh, download it. Uh, I think it's like. Eight bucks for a month, or you can spend forty nine dollars for the year. Um, if you want to go to my link on my bio through Instagram, it's Steve Tomahawk Townsell. Go right into the bio; you're going to see my reference. Click on that. Go through there. Everything you send and, and sign up for is going to help me out, so I'd be appreciative. Um, follow me as well, man. Steve Tomahawk Townsell on Instagram, Facebook, um, TikTok. All the platforms, you know. This is how that works, man. The shit goes quick though with that, bro. Super you know quick, saying? man, and it's it's the fastest growing one as it is. Like I said, it's just a lot. It's so censored though. I don't like the censorship with all that of it shit. censored, like, man. You know, it's bro. It's, Instagram, you can't even post like I can't even post what I really want to post. I get shadow banned. You know what I'm shadow saying? Shadow banned. You don't even know that you're banned. You don't. That's even what know I'm saying, dog. On, Yo, you post any like anti-government stuff, and you're gonna get like any five views. Religion bro. or any political things, man. How is it? Religion's bad now, yo. Um. I, the world's puss. I mean, it's pussified. Everyone's, you know. Bro, you're like, a father, man. How do you like? Do, doesn't it like? This is crazy, right? Like you gotta extreme, raise your kids to be. It's, it's, yeah. it's harder right now to be a parent more than ever, bro. Because yeah. you gotta really have your eyes on a swivel, right? Like. So yeah, it, it goes back to this social media. So we didn't grow up with that, right? Like, yeah. We grew up. You went outside to play. You rode bicycles. Like man, some of these. Kids, Come home when the lights go up. Yeah, you that know, was my these, rules. These kids, mine too, man. And these kids. You know, it's social media runs their lives, you know, uh, the phone and Internet. So I, as much as I want to have control, man, like I'm still learning to have control in general because like this is new to us. This is all new. Um, but I really don't like the entitlement. I don't like how cr- bitchy people have become, you know, when it comes to certain things. Um, I get bullying. Bullying sucks, man. I was bullied as a kid. <laughs> Um, I don't know. They kind of need it, though, bro. They I agree. So, goddamn, so, I can't be having talk talk to a twenty two year old who ain't ever been bullied and punched in the so nose. So yeah. So this is it, my glaring. case, man. I got picked on a lot as a kid. You know what I mean? Um, it did the opposite. Like I didn't curl up and cry. Shitty to say, I kind of became a sense of a bully in some aspects. Yeah, um, it happens. It, yeah, it's like you know, uh, can't beat them, join them type deal. I realize it now as an adult is shitty, um, but I grew out of those things, man. I I don't. The bullies to pick on the week, like even at, when I was younger, man, I started fucking up the bullies that would pick on them, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, it's part of life, man. And if you don't get dirt on your hands, man, how are you gonna, you know, ever be able to handle yourself? So I'm saying, you gotta learn. You got trial and error. Yeah, you know, man. Sometimes you gotta trial let these kids learn the hard way. You feel me? But if everything gets like nurtured and cultured, then you get like start giving away all these partition petition medals. And like you said, you got all these people that feel entitled, you know, like they deserve Stupid, something man. or like they need something, you know. And then the kids don't want to work, bro. Like I was living overseas for a while, so I just came back. But since I've come back, I've seen the change in the demographic, you know. Like the thing about the that's what's the good thing about the fighting and everything with the career, though. Like um, even if like uh, for me, I didn't make the money that I wanted to, but I'm able to like train people now. You know what I'm saying? It was like I can. It, it's able to like uh, open up a lot of doors. You a know what I mean? Like coaching. Doors. Oh, coaching is good. Like you, coaching and being able to teach is like a good thing. You know what I'm saying? I Not like every fighter really, can do it. So if you're able, it's a super. That's good. true. That's true, bro. So and I people think, aren't good coaches. And I you, think right? the people thought about that. I also like I teach um, two nights a week, man. And you do tomahawk striking. So my tomahawk striking is I just break down fundamentals, man. Everybody wants to watch a YouTube video and think that they're ready for the UFC immediately, and it's just like, man. And like 
<laughs> no, <laughs> like it, that's yeah. not it. So um, I teach at Archie Martial Arts. It's in Jensen Beach. It's Renato Tavares, which is huge in the jiu-jitsu game. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I teach there, and I just I break down the fundamentals, and I got some of these guys that are trying to compete. Um, I, I focus on what, what I do. Which is I'm, a, I'm a striker, so that's that's my game. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. Um, and I leave the jiu-jitsu to the, to the coaches to do jiu-jitsu. Um, but it's just fundamentals, man. Like I said, everyone wants to skip the process, you know. Everybody wants it now and don't want to put any of the work. Yeah, and, they want to learn how to do, like, spinning wheel kicks and shit. They don't want to learn how to throw a jab and yeah, some basics. Yeah, yeah, just fundies. basic footwork, man, just a pivot, just, you know. But it, it's it's working good. And I honestly, through coaching, I've gotten better. Like, I'm starting, like, I'll correct myself. And I, I've always heard people say that. Like, you never, you'll become a better fighter once you learn to coach or once you're able to coach. 100%, bro. And it, it, it's true. You, you say the details out loud that you didn't even know you knew. You know what I'm saying? Or sometimes yeah. you do something and you don't know why you do it. And then you say it out loud. And you're like, oh. And then you kind of like, and then, and then, yeah. And then when I notice when I'm teaching a technique that week, uh, I'm doing it all the time. Then that technique gets better for that time frame that I'm teaching it. So for sure, it opens up your game. But yo, my man. Steven, thank you so much, my brother, for the time, bro. I don't want to take up time. I know you're about to go train soon, yes, dog. Sir. You got to get it going. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, all right, so we already plugged up, we're ready to go and everything like this. My man, appreciate you coming through. Ladies and gentlemen, Honey Badger Hour. Let's we're go. Out.